Good day, and welcome to the Jade Rat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to have a look at the Nataraj paints. They are six 5mm watercolour tubes. They come in this lovely little box packaging. And I actually purchased this back in 2019 when I was uh, visiting Fiji. And it seems to be that the Nataraj brand is quite a popular um, stationary brand that is available in Fiji. So I decided to crack it open and try it out. They're wrapped in this uh, plastic cover and they're sitting in this cardboard type tray. Six colours that are Black, Prussian Blue, Viridian Green, Carmine, Lemon Yellow and White. The Viridian Green has kind of exploded a little bit. Um, it seems to be that it's worn down in the packaging. There's a foil seal on the tubes and piercing the tube with the cap. You can see that it's flowing out quite well. This white in particular looks a lot like gouache. It's on the more runny side um, and flows quite well. It's a little bit messy. Maybe there was a pressure buildup inside the tube, but it was very eager to uh, escape. You can see it there, it's still flowing even as I put the cap back on. Lemon yellow. Uh, also very excited to leave the tube, a little bit too excited it seems, um, and has kind of exploded everywhere, getting on my hands. You can see the sort of texture that it is, uh, it looks a lot like gouache, um, gouache out of the tube, that kind of thicker, almost kind of tacky. Uh, texture when you spread it around on your hands directly out of the tube. Carmine flowed very well. The Viridian Green however seemed to have a hard time getting out of the tube. You can see it there, I've pierced the foil but uh, a real attempt was made to open the tube and get it flowing out. Eventually I got a uh, knife and kind of stabbed it open a little bit wider but the base um, hole that I had made didn't really work. The Prussian blue uh, flowed a little bit on the firmer side but man did it stink like it was really smelly I don't know why. The black was fine and um, runny as normal and there you can see the rooting green has kind of uh, struggle to get out and I think that was because it had kind of exploded in the tube and was a little bit hesitant to leave. Maybe it was a little bit dried. Some air had entered. Going into the swatches now you can see that the white is quite opaque. Um, I mentioned earlier it was like gouache and straight out of the tube it does feel a lot like gouache. It's um, very thick like despite its runny texture, it's, it, you can slap it on quite thickly but once you dilute it down with water it flows very well. You can get a nice gradient there. Uh, the le lemon yellow seems to be a little bit more obvious but and you can see here with the carmine as you water it out it becomes more transparent and much easier to work with. The carmine is actually that's uh, still a little bit transparent straight out of the tube. Um, and I think the Viridian Green also is a little bit more on the transparent side. The Prussian Blue, really deep dark colour, still a little bit stinky. Although once it's dried it doesn't smell anymore. Maybe it was just a weird paint thing. but. You can see there it's flowing when you add water, it's spreading really well. 
and the black. Black's a lot like a nice warm grey. Almost looks a little bit uh, inky, but doesn't float as well as ink. And there we have it, there's the swatches. Now, Natraj is an Indian brand of paint, um, so I thought I would compare it to a similar colour from another Indian brand, Camel, which is at uh, Watercolour Tubes for Students. And this is the colour Prussian Blue. So with the Camel uh, paints, they're also in tubes, um, but you can see that when I apply water, I can achieve a really, really smooth gradient, like the the shift between the concentrated dark colour and then that lighter blue colour as you water it down is very smooth. There is maybe uh, four to five distinct blue shades that you can see as I water it down. The Natraj, however, has a far deeper and stronger colour. The blue is very, very deep there. You can see, you know, using roughly similar amounts of paint out of the tube, the Natraj side almost looks black because it's so um, concentrated. So I think in terms of comparing it to the Camel, the Natraj set is more concentrated or more pigmented, but you don't get as smooth of a gradient. You don't get those four to five distinct shades in the blue. It's pretty much just really deep blue, a medium blue, and then the light blue. And going through these um, paints, because there are six of them, it's quite easy to mix them to achieve a, a workable set of colours. So here are some swatches that I've done. Uh, essentially going through and mixing the four actual colours with each other to see how that they blend together and the sort of colours you can get by mixing the two. And then of course mixing that with black and white, each colour to see uh, the shades and hues that we can get out of it. Now onto the painting. So I wanted to test out how well these paints kind of behave in a normal painting because uh, swatching them out is a good way to see how the paints feel but to get a really good indication of how they look the best way to do so is on a painting. This painting is done in A5 size, um, also on another Indian product, uh, Cuddy cotton paper, watercolour paper. You can see it there, it's quite rough. It's got a bit of a rustic texture because papers are handmade. But because they are pure cotton, they seem to absorb um, the water very well. I'm actually not sure if these cutty papers are sized, but um, I noticed that, especially during heavy layers or uh, using an eraser, there is a bit of that cotton peeling on the surface of the paper. I am painting an ear. Um, this is Zoro's ear from One Piece because I wanted to use some masking fluid and I needed something like an earring that would reflect really well. But um, the reason why I picked an ear is that often when we do paintings of portraits, the ear is kind of covered by hair or a hat or something else. Or even just the perspective doesn't really allow you to see it very well. Um, and I, in particular, uh, often kind of forget about the ear. It's generally the last thing I paint like in terms of the face and skin tones. So I will paint out everything else and then go, oh crap, I've forgotten the ears, so I better quickly put that in. And often it doesn't connect as well as 
um, the rest of the, the face. So I thought I would paint some more ears to get some practice in and really see how deep and rich of a tone we can get from the colours. Ears have got a good range of highlights and shadows, so it's a good testing ground, I think. To going in initially with just some local colour, just putting in that, you know, a generic orange skin tone and then a generic bluey green for the hair and then finally uh, starting to carve out uh, yellow areas where it hits the sun a little bit more uh, purpler areas so using that really deep Prussian blue to add a bit of sh uh, shadow to the mix One thing I do notice is that if you give these paints some time to dry, they do dry a lot lighter. There is a distinct shift. And when you reapply water or another layer of paint over the top, particularly if it is a little bit runny or watery, the layers underneath kind of do activate, which again lends to that sort of gouache type of vibe that the paints were giving off earlier. And so that also makes it very easy to lift the colours out. You can see in a couple of areas near the neck and skin uh, and the hair, that border, it's very easy to kind of scrub the paper a little bit and lift off pigments in particular places. This kind of watercolour set I think would be really good for those who are thinking about getting into watercolours but not really sure or not really convinced that they need to get the massive uh, 24 colour set pans or, or something else. Yeah, very extravagant. I think this is a very suitable testing medium. Uh, the paints work the same way that any other watercolours work and they seem to be more pigmented than the camel watercolours. So it seems to be a little bit better than student grade but um, cheap enough to use without worrying about wasting heaps of money if you don't like it or if the look isn't what you're going for. Peeling off the masking fluid now you can see those highlights. This cutty paper um, seems to struggle a little bit with masking fluid. It's not as uh, crisp of a lift up and that may be due to the lack of possible sizing on these papers. Um, it does seem to sit a little bit deeper into the paper as opposed to being able to pull it off in, in like a string that you would normally have on watercolour papers, especially smoother watercolour papers. You can see there that I was um, softening out the highlights but because the, the surrounding paints get activated very easily there is a little bit of this bleed back into your previously dry areas and it kind of seeps a little bit too far. Trying this out on a few paintings now, I've noticed that you can hear Snowy screaming in the background. Um, I've noticed that if you put a wash down and you kind of leave it for a little bit, it seems to have bled a little bit more than I would like. Um, you kind of do have to watch it and control it because the paints are very prone to uh, that water spread. But one thing I really liked was this carmine colour um, as a 
like an over wash or almost like a glaze that just is very strong and gives a nice variation to the skin especially where there would typically be a little bit more blood flow something like that and it gives a good uh, contrast to sort of the more purpley or yellow bits of the skin touching up some of the textures now um, wasn't too fussed about the hair I think I just mixed um, the Viridian Green and the Prussian Blue sort of as a convenience just to you know dab on some texture but it wasn't really the focus so here you can see me using the white so the white acts a lot like the highlight white that you would use in gouache you can see that it does give a sort of chalky matte feel that watercolors generally don't have um, but it seems that the addition of that pigment kind of gives it that look and I think we are done maybe maybe I'm adding a little bit more deepening up some of the shadows in the, the earrings just to make it look a bit more obvious but yeah I like these paints I think they are good uh, starting paints and I think uh, it's worthwhile to try out if you're looking to get into watercolors but are not ready to put in heaps for a massive pan set or a tube set that may cost upwards of $40 or more from memory these were quite cheap they were I believe less than $10 Fijian so uh, Australian would probably be somewhere between yeah, seven, eight dollars. And there we have it. That was the first painting done. And I tried this out on some other papers as well. You can see my palette there. It does dry quite nicely on the palette. And um, it only requires a little bit of water to reactivate. I think it actually reactivates faster than the White Knights set. So this could be a bonus as well trying it on some smoother paper now a little bit experimental this piece but uh, you can see there the Prussian blue really stands out and the contrast between the Prussian blue and the orange the skin uh, makes, makes the painting really pop there we have it thank you so much for tuning in once again and I will see you next time. When that is, I'm actually not sure. But anyway, um, thank you and bye.